next guests are the writers and producers behind the movie Dumb Money, which is playing in theaters now. Let's take a look. Hey, do you, do you remember back at Stonehill when they dared me to run that mile naked? Yeah, there was a crazy storm that night. Everybody remembers that. Okay. Me too, man. You don't think people remember your four minute, three second mile? Oh, what is this, a pep talk? Stop hiding. Seriously, okay? Stop being all meek and running away. What, you want me to run through lightning with my out? Yeah, please. Exactly that. Run through lightning with your out. You. Please welcome to the show Lauren Shuker Blum and Rebecca Angelo, everybody. <laughs> Happy to be here. And you know, we don't often have two guests at once, but you are the best coordinated <laughs> outfits I've ever seen on the show. We tried. You tried, tried very hard and it paid off big time. She's in charge of outfits. Oh, I well, just listened. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think the GameStop uh, uh, phenomenon was something we were all aware of, but maybe didn't fully understand the details of. For those who uh, weren't fully up to speed on it, can you just explain what happened in that moment at time? Yeah, it's David and Goliath. Um, it is the insane true story of thousands of regular people who came together and beat Wall Street at its own game. And they were led by this guy, uh, Keith Gill, who went by the name Roaring Kitty and Deep <laughs> Value online. He had two names. And he is, you know, he's funny, he's weird. He did his YouTube videos in cat t-shirts with a red headband. And he made 50, almost $50 million overnight from GameStop, that video game store at the mall that we went to as nerdy eight-year-olds. So the thing about GameStop is hedge funds had shorted the company, which meant that if the business failed and everybody who worked there lost their jobs, the hedge fund guys would get rich. Um, but Keith and thousands or even millions of other people bought into the stock, which sent the price soaring. Um, a bunch of them got rich in the process, and a few hedge funds went under. And dumb money, I did not realize, is an actual term that Wall Street uses Yes. about the kind of investor that Keith was. Right, well, Wall Street calls itself smart money, mm -hmm. really, you know, original, and they call the retail investors dumb money. So in the moment where uh, the dumb money was buying up GameStop, they did not take it seriously at first because they thought this just proved their actual thesis, which is that if, we, if we're on the right side of this deal, that has to be... Exactly. The whole story caught everyone by surprise. Yeah, they call it, they call it a herding event. So like literally they view regular people as cattle. Um, so it did not take it seriously until it was way too late. Uh, you guys met uh, uh, writing for the Wall Street Journal. And how, when you write a screenplay like this, how does your background as reporters help in you know, putting this story together? Oh, it's so helpful. I think we're still reporters at heart. And we interviewed so many people on Wall Street. We talked to retail traders. And pretty much everything in the movie is true, uh, except for one thing. Uh, Pete Davidson, who stars in the film, plays a real guy named Kevin Gill. And Kevin is a door dasher. He's an excellent door dasher. Yeah, with real a, Kevin is an excellent door yes, dasher. He's he a 99% rating. Okay. But when we cast Pete Davidson, and we realized we can't sell Pete Davidson as an excellent door dasher. <laughs> so we made him a door dasher from hell in the movie. Gotcha. He eats people's food, he drinks their drinks, he's driving his car all over their lawns. Now, uh, you guys have uh, uh, been up against something that a lot of films have been up about. You have this in incredible uh, cast, Paul Dano, uh, Nick Offerman, uh, uh, who, uh, Seth Rogen, Stan. Yeah. Sebastian America Stan. Yeah, America It's a Woodley. great cast, but uh, unfortunately, no one is able to go out because of the sag strike mm -hmm. and do press, which means that as writers and producers, you have been doing a great deal of press for this movie. Has that been a strange experience? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say we're like not supposed to be brought into yeah. direct sunlight. We're supposed to be kept in like a closet. Yeah, but... writers are like behind their laptops, hunched over, and here we are in national television. <laughs> um, you know, we were at the Toronto Film Festival. We pulled up to the red carpet in our car, and we could hear the crowd going crazy. They're like, "Yes, it's Seth Rogen," and the doors opened, and the crowd was like, "Oh, they got yeah. us." <laughs> You did take a lovely photo on the red carpet. Like, don't sell yourself short. We're trying short. so hard. We, <laughs> um, 
Those bags, our friend who, who designs Edie Parker made those for us, and they say dumb on one side and money on the other. And we got out of our car so confidently and held up our bags and were smiling for the cameras. And then somebody ran up to us um, and switched around Lauren's bag because she was flashing dumb. So we were like idiots, dumb. just like dumb, smiling dumb. for the camera. And it just said dumb, dumb. You're like, we're famous, dumb, dumb. <laughs> yes. Uh, your uh, husband, Jason Blum, who's a, a, a film producer, he was actually here last week. He was. And he was talking about the fact that he had a movie coming out and then he had to change the date because Taylor Swift had a movie coming out. He didn't want to open the same weekend as her. Right. But then the issue was that he might have to move to the weekend your movie was coming out. And he said that was very tense. Yeah, jerk. Yeah. Yeah, we stole our weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, did it all work out okay? Things are going out okay, yes. Okay. But he had a competing project to ours also. Yeah. His oh, own, he had his own... Yeah, his own GameStop movie. So we had a kind of like Cold War in uh -huh. the house. And every time the studio called with notes, I had to like hide in the closet to take the notes. And then I would open the door afterwards and I would hit Jason in the face because <laughs> he was waiting outside <laughs> eavesdropping. How could he do that to yeah, his own and wife? Yeah, our children were like spies somehow. You know, it was a tough 18 months. All right. I'm glad that you came out and the winner on the GameStop Yeah, the important saga. thing is we won. Yes, you did win, and it's really a wonderful movie, and I hope that people go out and see it. I enjoyed it a great deal, and it's so lovely to have you both here. Thank you so Thank much. You. you guys, that's Lauren Schuchermann and Rebecca Anderson.